Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get started. First of all, I'm just going to introduce myself. My name is Deborah Loke. I've done a lot of video and production type things in the past, but this is the first time I've ever attempted to do one of these live video uh, posts over a group. So bear with me if we lose connectivity. I have seen in the past where people uh, get overwhelmed with the uh, internet connections on the group and all of a sudden everything goes down. But fear not, I am actually recording this uh, two different ways so that if something should happen, I can go ahead and save off either video and then repost for you all later. So let's get started. I'm just basically going to introduce you to some tools that you might be interested in getting. Let's start right from the basics. I'm just going to show you some things real quick that you need to have. Safety glasses are always important. I'm going to talk about them first and we'll go from there. So we're just kind of showing you those at the moment and we'll see how long it takes for the delay. All right, here's the safety glasses I'm showing you. You can see them uh, pretty standard. You can get them from anywhere, Home Depot, Lowe's, uh, any, any one of your hardwares locally should have them. They are really important to have because Essentially, the solder can sputter away and sputter into your face, and you don't really want to have any accidents. I highly recommend if you're starting this and you don't uh, have some experience in it, that you do have a little tiny fire extinguisher around just in case. I have done this in the past, so I pretty much know where, what my limitations are, but it always is best to be safe than sorry. Uh, so I did try to locate my little fire extinguisher I had around here but uh, I'm in the middle of moving everything around in my house and it got misplaced this morning so that's that all right so I'm gonna start off by talking about a really small very compact uh, beginners kit this kit happens to be one that I actually did a product review on so I'm real familiar with how it works and what uh, all the bits and pieces are. So we'll just talk about how this goes out first and then we can go from there. This one will cost you about $20 on the market. Uh, go right ahead and purchase this if you're just starting out. This will give you everything you really need uh, for just a, just a basic kit. If you're not sure you're gonna be all that into soldering, you're only gonna do it once or twice a month. This is a great kit for that. It even has a little cute stand here uh, that you can use uh, to hold up the uh, soldering iron. And I'll just get it here in the view so you can see it. Let's see, over here should be pretty good for you to see. All right, I'm holding it in my hand. I don't I'll see how well it's uh, showing up, but here I'll try to adjust my light a little better. But essentially what it has is a wet sponge and a little stand that holds the soldering iron onto it. Uh, so we'll just set that aside and I'll show you how to use that in a minute. Now uh, this kit actually comes with some solder. I have no idea what the resin, if it's resin coated or whatever. I'm pretty sure it probably is being that this is a kit and they just want to keep it simple. Uh, but that's one thing. It does come with a little brass brush. We all are familiar with what those brass brushes do for us, so that's cool. It has a little uh, uh, Phillips head and a flat head screwdriver that we can use, um, you know, to, to make adjustments if we need to. And the things I really like that it has are these really finite tweezers. Uh, so those are really handy for holding on to stuff. Uh, just really impressed with these they are really cool I'm gonna put the caps back on them for now because they are rather sharp this kit has some more pick tools with it and these are the tools okay I'm going a little fast for the video so I'll, I'll slow down and pause a little more so usually I'm uh, speaking pretty fluently and quickly so I'll, uh, I'll slow it down a little bit because our video is actually behind us so these are some really cool items to pick away some of the solder if you had to move some you've got a little uh, jaw here it 
helps you pry up things. Uh, so if you're interested in this kit, like I said, it's 20 bucks. I'll have a complete uh, items list that you can use uh, to order whatever you want. And we're going to talk about some of the higher end stuff as well. I don't happen to have the higher end stuff. I have one little unit that was kind of given to me a while back, and I kind of figured out why it was given to me. It doesn't really heat up as much as it needs to, so I'm probably going to go ahead and give it back and uh, go ahead and get a new one, but we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, so we'll just get these bits and pieces back in here. Okay, uh, This is just an eye kit. These are kind of handy to have around uh, just for general purposes. Even though we're not using it on our glasses, we might need to adjust our, our safety glasses or whatever, but it comes with it. The coolest, one of the coolest things in this kit is the fact that the tips can actually be uh, inter interchanged. So you can use a, like a cutting tip and so on and so forth. Today's purposes, we're just going to use a very uh, finite tip, but you can see all the amazing different tips here and these are kind of important so this one here it's got like a, a 45 degree angle to it this is great for when you're trying to smooth out the the solder you know you just kind of smooth it out and it's at a perfect angle so that's really cool and this one here will help you cut cut into something if you need to do that for metal say you've got a real soft metal and this will actually cut the metal uh, some of these are more pointed, and again, this is a this is another type of point. You can use it at an angle, and it pretty much will smooth out uh, the solder for you. So that's that. I wanted to show you this basic kit because I saw there was a lot of trepidation about soldering, and really, it's not that big of a deal. If you get this twenty dollar kit, you can practice your skills. Yeah, if you don't like it, you can give it away to somebody who will use it. If you do like it, it's a great introductory kit, and you will have all these little tools to go with you when you go ahead and buy the bigger uh, system that I'm going to show you. This is what you call a desoldering um, needle. Basically, you press it down like that when you're uh, soldering something, and you make a mistake, and you know, you want to get the... You want to get the uh, solder back off. You basically just put it down where you're going to have the solder piece. And you hit this little spot right here. And I'll go ahead and catch up. Uh, and let it, uh, so I can show you. So we'll get to that point. All right. There we go. Okay. So you basically press the little plunger down, which I did. And now you go ahead and pop it out like that and what that does is it will move the hot solder away from your work. Uh, practice this because this is a little tricky. I've done it a couple times when I've had to solder some cables and it works great uh, but you do have to practice a little bit. You have to make sure that the solder you're trying to pull away from the item that you're pulling it away from is actually molten uh, so the only that's the only way it's going to work so it just basically quickly pulls it in and away with air okay so that's that now I'm going to show you the basic soldering iron that came with that kit and this is it it's all heated up so I'm not going to touch it uh, again that's pretty a smart thing to do is don't touch it once you get it heated up you can see it's red hot here on the belt on the base so you just want to be careful with that after you get it uh, warmed up so right now, it's warmed up. This one, I happen to really like, even though it's a little simple one, it has an adjustable um, heat uh, temperature. So you can go ahead and make it a cooler temperature if you want to do something like pot metal, or you need it to be up at 450 degrees, this will go to it, which I thought that was kind of impressive. This is showing up at 60 watts and at 110 volts. That's a pretty decent wattage to have. That would be what I would recommend. I wouldn't go any lower than that, but always make sure you has, have adjustable temperature. That's really quite important. When you start learning what metals will uh, allow you to solder and what won't, 
it is important to know the temperatures that you're going to need uh, to use the solder. Once again, this is just a 101. I'm introducing you to this um, as a skill that you can pick up later and uh, practice. Um, it by no means is high end. So my friends out there in the group that have done soldering before, you're probably giggling by now that uh, you're bored <laughs> because you've seen all of these bits and pieces. But my purpose here today was just to sort of introduce you to the products that you can just purchase at a very reasonable price to give this uh, new skill a shot. If you're like me, you tend to go into things, um, go big or go home. When I was in stained glass work, uh, lead work, I actually bought a lot of items that I'm going to use here today that I've, I've had around. Um, certainly you don't need to buy all of this at first until you are sure you really want to do this. Um, I'd say if you wanted to get into it comfortably and you wanted the best products out there, it'll probably cost you 250 Now don't let that scare you because I just showed you a $20 unit that that's all you really need to get yourself started. If you're going to only do the soldering once a month and a couple of jump rings or whatever, by all means, the $20 kit will be just fine for you. If not, and you want to jump into it full-fledged like I plan on, you're going to go ahead and have, you know, the best products that you can have. Now I'm going to show you one of the higher-end uh, wellers. This one didn't seem to be heating up well. I'm not even going to go ahead and plug it in because I don't want to uh, waste our time with it. We did try this, Sandy and I, at her place this last week, and it just wasn't strong enough to uh, melt away the the solder, you know, melt it down. I did find out that there were some adjustments that I can make, and the adjustments are here, so I'll go ahead and make those uh, when I test this out again and give it a good scrub down with steel wool. You'll always want to keep your, your tips as clean as you can. Um, don't have to go crazy about it, but you do want to have uh, them relatively clean. You don't really want any solder residue on this. This does have some residue on it. We just couldn't get it to heat up far enough to uh, get to what we needed to actually clean the tip. Remember, do not touch from here down. Here down. Do not touch those. You'll get burned. Make it a habit never to touch it, whether you think it's plugged in or not. It's a good way to teach your brain to not touch it. I can't tell you how many times people have actually touched it here, you know, around me, because we, we work on cables and stuff all day, and they'll forget, and they'll go to try to touch it here. No, no, no. Don't touch it. Make a good practice to never touch it, even if it's unplugged. Don't touch that part of these soldering guns. And there's another good reason not to touch it, too. The oils on your hand will actually contaminate the tip, so you don't want that either. And now, while we're sitting here on this weller, you're going to actually see um, a... I'm just going to adjust our video here a little bit, give a better view. Let's see if I got it. Give me a second, just making sure it's giving us a better view. Moved things around a little. All right, good. So this is how the solder gun actually fits in this coil. This coil holds it away from everything. You don't want to just set this on the table uh, because you could burn your table and you know other things. So you really don't want to do that. You want to make sure that you practice all safety um, as best you can. So. Be sure to always store your tip away from everything. While we're here, this sponge should be wet with water only. I like to use this type of sponge with the blue side. It's like a, a rough uh, steel wool sort of type material and then regular sponge on the other side. I like this side because it kind of helps keep that tip a little cleaner. Uh, rather than just the sponge, all right? And I'll show you why you want to use that later. So I'll set this one aside. So I'm just going to show you real quick via some slides that I printed out for you. I uh, just thought it would be a lot easier than try to jump back and forth to uh, different screens. So let me go ahead and adjust this camera a little better so we have it. So bear with me for the bouncies. 
it should do it. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm showing you photos for now because I just thought it would be a lot easier to uh, do it this way rather than flip suit through some pages. So we'll just let the videos study in on that. This would be uh, the example I just showed you of the Weller. You could get this for about $39, which again is very reasonable for these type of units. Uh, it does have the adjustable tips that you can interchange. That's cool. And uh, it has adjustable power you know, uh, wattage to it, so that's also important. It has the area for the sponge, which I recommend you swip, swap out to the uh, the one I showed you. It has the, the soldering iron holder. Again, very, very important. Here is my dream machine. I want this one really bad. So I have this one on my Christmas list. So hopefully I will get it, but we'll see. I've tried to be a good girl this year, so maybe Santa will bring it to me. This one is a digital version of the one I just showed you. This one steps up to about 150, I believe. Again, interchangeable tips. You see what your temperature is right on the digital display, which I really like. It has a separate holder, which I'm going to really love because I've noticed that I'm getting a little klutzy with the one that I showed you. Now, you may not have a big um, demand to do the soldering so maybe the $39 one will work just fine for you. In my case I like this unit to be a little separate and I'm actually gonna um, glue it down to my work surface so that it's permanent so I can just pick up my work sur surface and move it around as I need to. Um, we kind of came up with that idea at Sandy's house. She had a clip and I said oh it's, this is a little top heavy it doesn't want to sit there. She says, well, I'll just E6000 it to the to the tile. And I thought, well, that's a brilliant idea. But that's why she's our mentor, right? She does, she does all that stuff so good. So um, so this unit is on my dream list. Uh, you, I'll have all these links for you, too. So don't worry about figuring out or writing anything down. I'll have it all laid out nice, nice for you, okay? So we're going to move on. Now, most important is to have a... A really decent uh, helping hands mechanism. This piece here is about $20. Uh, it's great. You got a little bit of a magnifying glass on it. You've got the holder. You've got the little arms. Again, small to medium usage, I would say, uh, for the person who's just going to be soldering kind of uh, as a hobby. This is a great little product, okay? Now, if you're going to get more serious into it, this is the one I am ordering. It's actually on its way now. It comes with this steel base, which makes it very, very heavy and has the ability to hold it for you a lot better than the little tippy thing that we, we, we looked at a second ago. Uh, that thing can tip because if you just have too heavy of jewelry or too heavy of a piece that you're trying to solder, uh, it can tip over on you if you're, if you're not careful. You should probably clamp it to your surface if you really had to. But I kind of like this one because it does have that steel on the bottom and it has rubber feet. I've seen these in use and they are the bomb. These two uh, arms here, they go ahead and clip onto the unit that you're trying to solder and then these two stabilize further if you need. Or they'll, they'll be that other person's hands you know, when you when you have a jump ring and you're trying to solder that onto something, it's always best to have it clipped away. You don't want to really handle stuff any more than you have to, because remember, our natural instincts are to just pick up something with our hands. The most important thing I can really emphasize is don't do that. Use tweezers or whatever uh, to hold things. Don't try to hold things, you know, with any protection, because that, that'll get you nowhere real fast. You'll end up uh, to the doctor's office. Now here's the stuff that I am currently ordering. It's on its way. This is called a Muggy and it is a lower solder. You can see here the 350 degrees. It's a lower soldering point. Yes, you can solder pot metal 
we've all been hearing that you can't solder pot metal, but yes, you can. I am actually going to do another video on this if you all would be interested. Um, I'll be happy to share it with you because I'm going to treat this as a product review as well. So I always put my product reviews up on my personal product review website as well as Amazon when, when they let me. Sometimes they don't, depending on if I can prove that I bought it there or whatever. Um, but I am very excited about trying out this product. How many times have we seen a pin missing or, you know, the bits and pieces of the, of the clasp that... You know, we figure, well, we're just going to have to repurpose it because, uh, you know, it's broken and we don't really have a way of putting on a new pin back. Well, now you may have a new way. From all the reviews I've read on this, it works 100%. The auto business, the auto um, automotive industry uses this a lot when they're dealing with things like the, the car ornaments that are usually made out of pop metal and say an arm or something breaks off the the panther's uh, body, folks are able to now fix those uh, very limited, rare, vintage um, pieces that fit back up on the, the car hood. So that's kind of cool. And that's where I picked this information up. I kind of cross path a lot because I'm you know, in an industry where I have to be able to fix a lot of my own things. So I have more tools than most guys I know. People usually come over and ask to borrow my tools because I'm the one that has them all. Got just about everything. But um, that's why I just have a big interest in fixing things. So the jumping into this vintage uh, jewelry repair kind of made a lot of sense for me. So here I am. Anyway, so that's that product. Now... If after all of this you're still afraid <laughs> to solder, actually Sandy helped remind me about this JB Weld stuff. I had heard about it in the past, I've never used it, but she reminded me of it on Tuesday when I was sitting with her and she showed me a bit of it and I'll tell ya, it is the bomb. So if you end up being a little afraid of doing what we're going to show you how to do today, you feel free in getting this product because this will actually be cool. Um, it, it's cold, so you're not going to burn yourself. You actually miss, mix A and B together. You get the, the stuff that actually is a, a steel reinforced epoxy. Be careful that you don't get the wood epoxy. That won't work for you. So make sure when you look at all the different colors, you get the red one. There's the red, there's the brown, and there's a yellow one too. I'm not sure what the yellow one was for, but this is the one you want with the red label. I thought I'd mention that. At the end of this, you're going to see this beautiful list of all of the supplies that I talked about today. Certainly, you don't need to buy them all. You just sort of buy them at your comfort level. So, enough of all that. So now, let's go on and try to do a little soldering here. So, everything's pretty heated up. I'm going to go ahead and pull some... Uh, supplies out here. Here's solder. Let's talk about solder for a moment. I'm being told that 6040 is a good uh, solder um, core to get for this type of work. I also have 5050. I'm going to do a little more research and be able to give you a more cognizant uh, idea of what 6040 means. It has to do with the amount of uh, product in it, so the amount of tin, I believe. So the tin is what helps um, solder two bits together. So that's what you're going to use there. Here's the little clamp I was talking about. So we're going to get this ready to go. I have a just a metal button. So here's something that you're going to have to do a little homework on. And because Sandy has all these wonderful files for us, she's told us how to identify different metals. Uh, so I would highly recommend that you read that uh, before you proceed with your soldering um, attempts. Now, if you're like me, you just go for it. Uh, if you're not afraid to, you know, get a little solder on something that, you know, just for practices, uh, go ahead. This happens to be a metal button. I'm kind of starting to see that I can incorporate these into some of my pieces of jewelry. So I'm just gonna experiment here. So this is a total experiment. It's the only button I had. So I don't know if it's gonna work or not, but we're gonna see uh, together. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put that there. 
and okay, tweezers, solder. And don't mind me while I fiddle around here a little bit. Now, what you can do, there's two methods here that you can go. You can either take and pull the solder out away from the roll and hold it in your hand like I'm doing right here, or you can actually clip little pieces off and do it that way if you want. I'm gonna go ahead and just clip a bigger than I would normally use piece because I want to, you to be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna rearrange this a little bit and just make sure I've got a good view just for you. I'm assuming everyone is hearing me because I am seeing some comments fly by on my screen. I can't really uh, respond at the moment because I'm trying to stay focused on what we're doing. But uh, this is what uh, what we're doing, <laughs> soldering 101. I'm basically just giving you some, some easy to follow uh, steps. I'm gonna actually spell them out for you in, in Word as well as you're gonna see this video. I'm probably gonna edit this video, video a little bit uh, just to make it more condensed, but this is just for our review today. So, one of the most important steps that you should do before you try to solder anything to anything is clean it. What I do is I have a little ceramic dish here and I have a little plastic dish here. Now you're going to say to yourself, why would you have two different materials for what appears to be clear water? Well, I know in my head that water won't uh, damage plastic. So that tells me this bowl is water. Now you might want to write a little W with a Sharpie, whatever, but this is just a good habit to get yourself into. Find yourself some of these little sushi bowls, you know, for your soy sauce and have a glass one and a plastic one. In your head, you know water isn't gonna hurt the plastic. So this automatically tells me that this is water. So I'm just gonna set that aside. This one is a ceramic dish, okay? I have alcohol in here, rubbing alcohol. This will help me clean some spots off today because I don't like to use flux unless I absolutely have to. And I'll explain that in a little bit. But for today's purposes, this is alcohol. It's very important that you don't mix these two up because if you accidentally put the <laughs> piece that you've soldered that's a little hot, you have a chance of lighting this on fire and you don't wanna do that. So make sure that you have it clearly marked or if it makes sense to you to do it the way I'm doing it, just because my brain works that way, uh, do it whichever way is safer for you. Uh, you can absolutely write a little W on the side and a little A or, or alcohol or whatever, A for alcohol and W for water, whatever works for you. For me, I relate to material, so this is why I know this is alcohol. And you don't need too much alcohol in there, okay? Don't put too much in, less in, less chance of it catching a big fire for you. And be careful where you pour it, all that good stuff. I always emphasize safety because you can uh, have a problem if you're not following a certain uh, routine. So the routines are more important than anything. Uh, always have a solid routine. So let's go ahead and clean our area. And remember, I talked about the safety glasses, so you wanna get those on. And I am going to grab a little handy dandy Q-tip for now. Uh, there is brushes you can purchase in these kits if you really want, but I just use a Q-tip, it's easier for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this button where I anticipate soldering. The lovely part about alcohol is it will dry really quick. So I'm just clearing the area. I'm just gonna try to put a jump ring here. And so this is gonna be experiment for both of us because I don't know whether this is gonna work or not because I'm not sure what the metal is. So we're just gonna give it a try. So let's just make sure that uh, that dries up. 
And let's just get a jump ring. Let's see. I am going to pick one I already pulled off. All I'm doing is straightening out this jump ring really quick. Remember, handle everything with pliers or whatever. Don't just pick things up because you just, when you're working in this sort of conditions, just condition your mind to always say, I'm not going to touch anything with my bare hands. It's just the best practice. And sorry for the pause here, I'm just straightening these out. By the way, don't be alarmed if you see a little naked hairless creature come by us because she is pretty nosy and I've had to chase her away all morning long. I think I chased her enough that she's fallen asleep now, so hopefully that's the case. But I didn't want you to be startled if you've never seen one before, because people think I'm rather bizarre that I have them, but I love them. They're awesome critters. Maybe I'll even introduce you at the end to her. She's over there sleeping now, but at any given time, she gets up and moves very quickly. And so uh, <laughs> she's like a little rocket. All right. All right, I've got these straightened out enough. All right, so we want to hold the jump ring with the tweezers. Now, you can either do it this way, or you can put it in the jaws of life here. I think that's how I'm going to do it in this case, because we're just kind of going right along here. So we're just going to adjust it the way we need to. Go ahead and pick this up. Now, obviously, in this case, I already have my brain telling me that this jump ring is not hot. So I'm just helping myself move this a little faster. But remember, best practice. Don't touch anything with your fingers. Okay, I'm just getting it adjusted here. Bear with me. You'll want to have a really clear mind when you do this, too, because... If you're trying to do this and you're rushing or there's commotion around in the house, um, don't do it because uh, one little accident will burn your finger and I, I would feel terrible if I knew that you got burned because you were uh, distracted. So do this quiet, you know, when, when the house is quiet. I just find it so much better, so much easier to deal with than trying to do it when every, anybody's around. When I'm dealing with a little three-year-old running around or whatever. Uh, you know, you don't want to do it that way. So you can see here I'm cleaning the area again. Again, I can't emphasize this enough. If your area isn't clean, you have zero chance of it working. At least if you clean it, you have a good chance of having it work. Now I'm just going to use this uh, $20 iron here and we'll see what we got. Let's give this a try. And I'm going to keep this real long for the moment. There's a process I'm going to talk about in a minute called tinning. I'm just going to see if we can get past without doing the tinning. We'll see what happens here. So I'm just going to turn it here and make sure that you can see it. Let me get the video to catch up. Just so I can make sure. Alright, looks like we're doing well. So... You basically hold it down on your jump ring. Get that jump ring pretty warm. And if you can, hold it on both the metal and the jump ring. Because the key here is you want to get those hot. And I'm going to just going to see if I can get this uh, solder to melt in. You have to have a little bit of a touch. It, it does take a little bit of a, a finesse. 
when I was watching Sandy try it for the first time, I saw that she she really did have the finesse I'm talking about. It takes it takes a little bit of finesse. No, this didn't. So it looks like it's sticking, which is a good sign. Good sign. All right. Now you can see I smoothed it out a little bit. You can come back and file that if you need to and uh, give it some time to cool. Don't touch it. Don't do any of that. We're just gonna give it a second. I'm just gonna blow it up a little bit here. You can file that off and clean it up. And that's all there is to it, really. That just is enough to get you started, get you soldering your, your charms. Obviously, uh, gold-plated charms, we'll have to talk about another whole process for that. This is basically going to help you get started with the simple stuff, the silver, the silver toned, the, 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 the metals that are silver. I'm going to actually show you this, because this is going to be what I'm going to add to this button when I'm done. These little wings, I don't know. Back in, uh, see, I was pretty young. When I was 20 years old, I bought a bunch of these stupid things. <laughs> they were for your hair. You can see one of the wings busted off. So I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to try to solder that wing um, and do it right here live with you because we still have some time. I promise to keep this to an hour. So this is just an introduction. And obviously, if you have questions, please put them in the comments, and I will address every single question. All right. But this is just a cool little thing. So let's see. I'm 59. I got this when I was 20. So let's do the math. This would be about 40 years old. Oh, I guess I'm getting old. Yikes. Schnikes. But it's a cool little thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it. I guess we call these trem tremblers. I'm learning the terminology for vintage jewelry. So these, these actually flop around. But it was a little hair piece. And I got it when I was 20. I got a bunch of them, too. <laughs> I just thought they were so cool. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to adhere it to this button when I get it done. Won't that be kind of cool? So anyways, let's see if my solder job worked. Should be cool enough. And... And it didn't, and that's just what we're gonna. That's just what we're gonna have to test. We're gonna have to um, experiment. Not every metal is gonna work, especially if you don't know what the metal is. Now, there's another process called tinning, so we can try that. Let's give that a try and see if that helps. And this just may be one of those metals that we can't solder. It, this is what it's gonna be. It's just gonna be a trial and error for you until you get the hang of it. You're going to know what jump rings, you know, solder, which ones don't. Obviously, the soldering uh, did adhere to the jump ring, so that's a good sign. Uh, it just didn't adhere to my button. It could be that I didn't heat the button. Uh, you can use a torch to heat the button. If you're brave enough to use a torch, you can do that. You can warm this piece up. Um, if you know, if you have confidence that the metal itself isn't going to destroy, obviously if there's stones and things, you want to remove all stones. If you're going to be doing this uh, on a piece that has a lot of rhinestones on it, whatever, and you're uncertain whether they're glass or plastic or paste or whatever they are, uh, you'll want to just go ahead and pop those out. This is, this is a repair situation, not an actual make. Now my goal actually is to learn how to make my own jewelry, my own designs, my own metal, bits and pieces, m much like some of our, our favorites out there. Miriam Haskell, I think her name was. I just love her stuff. Uh, I'm still studying how she puts that stuff together, but that's my personal goal. I wanna be able to make my own jewelry, so maybe in 20 years somebody views my jewelry as vintage. Wouldn't that be fun? So. That's what I'm looking to do. All right, so let's do let's do this. We're gonna try some tinning, and I was gonna show you one of the um, torches you can use. And what better way to get these but ask for them for Christmas gifts? <laughs> That's how I got some of my stuff. 
my family knows I'm creative and they know they can't go wrong. And so we put a little Christmas list up on Amazon and no more getting the junk gifts that you used to get. Nobody knows what you like. Now they know what you like. They'll, they'll buy what you need, what you like. So here's my new little torch that I got for Christmas. I haven't even taken it out of the box yet. But I foresaw what I was going to be doing with this project. So I asked for this super cool, beautiful torch. So if I had this running, I would go ahead and heat this up. I'm not going to do it for today's purposes. I didn't want to scare everybody and make you think you had to have this. Because this can be a little intimidating until you get used to it. I wanted you to just start out with the basics. Um, basically, solder a couple jump rings together. You know they're like metals. You know that they'll solder, and you can go from there. Just to get some of your practice up. Then you can take it another step. If you're into wiring, I'm actually um, doing some wiring lately to, Im to implement into my vintage jewelry uh, and assemblies. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm going to actually be soldering some of the wire, and I know that that will solder fine. Uh, so it's just going to be trial and error for you until you get a hang of it. I will go in more detail and make sure that I get you a list of what metals can be soldered and what can be soldered for, say, brass to whatever. Um, I know copper can be soldered, that kind of thing. They have to have a lower temperature than... Uh, you know some of the higher end metals gold and silver again the real deal gold and silver are a different animal so those require a little bit of a different um, approach than what we are doing today anyways so that's that so let's try this again so I did wipe this but I'm gonna go ahead and wipe it again because I don't know whether I touched it or not I'm just gonna clean it up let it dry a minute now we're gonna try something called tinning what that means is we're gonna actually be putting some silver down on the metal and seeing if we can get it to adhere. Now in this case, I would probably have better luck if I did have the flux. For whatever reason, because my house is torn apart at the moment, I could not find the little jar of flux that I have. The right flux that you want is the one that looks like honey. I will have that on your um, parts list uh, for you to pick up. In this case, if I had the flux, it would certainly help me uh, adhere this metal to this metal a lot better, a lot more efficient. Uh, for whatever reason, I couldn't find it today. Wouldn't that be just the way it goes? <laughs> Something always has to go wrong. If that's the one thing that went wrong, well, that's the one thing that goes wrong. So what we're going to do now is do something called tinning. I'm going to give it a try here and see what we got. Let's turn it a little. I'm going to lay this down and try to get the metal a little hotter. Give it a minute, just let it heat up. Move it around a little bit. Just give it some time. Looks like it's getting warm. Now we'll let the solder go down. see that it takes about 30 seconds to get that to melt so we're just gonna see if we can get that to adhere and I don't think it's gonna adhere it looks like it's not wanting to I didn't get the the underneath metal hot enough so in that case it would be just best if I used the torch but that was a little higher than what I wanted to do with you today uh, for safety reasons I want you to just get the hang of it first before you try it once you have melted the solder, keep in mind it changes the molecular uh, structure of the metal, so you may or may not have success in reusing this piece of solder. Most people don't reuse it, but I'm a kind of person, I pick up pennies on the sidewalk, so uh, if you're that kind of person, save it. You can find a place to use it. Uh, with that being said, let's go ahead now and try that little butterfly just for the heck of it. And remember, don't touch anything that you have touched the 
the uh, the solder, the hot iron solder to. Uh, we're going to try a second try on this button. Now that I have the uh, flux involved with this process today, it might work a little better. So I went ahead and put the flux on. Again, make sure you don't contaminate the brush. If you use it for flux, don't use it for anything else. And that could have been some of our problem earlier. Maybe the metal still wasn't quite clean enough. But let's give this another try. So in this case, I already have some solder there. Uh, so I'm just going to try to remelt that solder. And remember I said that always, uh, once you've melted solder, you may or may not have success in remelting. But we're going to give it a try anyways and see what happens. Let's see what we get. Let's see what happens. I'm just going to pull this apart. Oh, see, it didn't work. So, it must be something about this button. Maybe this button isn't all metal. I don't know. I'll have to investigate it and figure out what the metal is in order to be more successful. But, the solder did stick to the jump ring. So... That's half the battle, right? So let's try this again. Let's try this again. Well, let's see. I do have a little solder there, so I'm just going to melt it, see if I can get it to reconstitute. Let's see what we got here. Thank you. for me. And now we're going to try this little butterfly. See what we get here. Hope I have one success here for you today. I just want you to see that it will work. It's just a matter of trial and error. And don't be afraid. Try. You know, you're never going to know until you try. Everyone says, oh, I'm so afraid to try, try soldering. Well, don't be afraid. Get the $20 kit. It's not like you're going to lose that, that much if you decide you just it's too much for you. You just can't do it. Um, you know, it's, it's not that much of an investment to try a skill. Now, this ought to be a challenge because this little guy wants to move around. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rethink this a little bit. I am going to put one of the parts of the wing in place. Maybe. Let's see. See, this is what this is. It's about figuring it out. Just might take you a minute to make adjustments. And I'm going to go ahead and get this guy in place. The most important thing, too, is to make sure that your work, the item you're working on, is solid and secure. In other words, it won't move around on you when you're trying to push the solder to it. This won't be the prettiest solder, but I bet it'll come out. I bet it'll work. Let's see. I think that's pretty lined. Let me make sure you can see it pretty good. I might have to move it around a little bit. Just make an adjustment here on the spring. These are little springs. There, that should do 
it. And all right, just making sure. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and clean it. Now, the best reason to use flux is the fact it has a bit of a acid to it and it cleans up the area. The reason I try to stay away from using the flux as much because anywhere the flux is is where the solder will flow. So if you wanted to keep your area that you're trying to lay solder down tighter, I call it tighter or cleaner, um, using flux can be troublesome. So you want to keep that in mind if you really feel you need to use the flux. But I've just had better, cleaner results when I don't use flux. And I know I'm going to get yelled at for that because everyone who is accustomed to soldering talks about flux. But if you get the rosin core stuff, that is flux built in. And that's why I just love that product. It's kind of been new in the last few years. Back when I was doing stained glass windows, it was a must. You had to have flux. And uh, to, I'd like to tip the hat to one of our members who mentioned that. Yes, absolutely, I agree. That was my history, was stained glass windows. I've repaired a lot of them. I've done a lot of my own stained glass art. And uh, yes, flux is very important for that. But in this case, um, because we have a, a better product out there that has the flux built in, it's not as critical. So let's see if we can get this guy to work. Wish me luck. I'm going in. I think that did it. I'm going to give it a minute here just to cool before I move it. All right. Well, she didn't connect, but I see what I can do give her a chance to work. Again, that's for another show. This was basically just to show you what you need to do. But yeah, I'm going to have to reevaluate this metal. I'm not sure what this metal is. Maybe I don't have the right solder for it. That brings up another good point. When you are picking your solder, there's going to be different solder for different metals. I will try to get you a list of that. Um, what, you know, to, to tell you exactly what solder you need for what, and uh, so that will help you out in that case um, as well. I was trying to think of anything else I wanted to just show you today. Oh yes, this little tool. Oh my goodness, I just found this tool today, and I think it's going to be a great tool. I'm going to go ahead and just open it up so I can show you real quick. 
it's called a pencil torch and in the case of that button that I really needed to heat up I could have used this uh, to heat that button to give it a more of a shot of working but look at how finite that is wow that's gonna be easy that's not so intimidating as that other one I showed you this one here there's a big difference uh, it won't be as intimidating to somebody who's just starting this out. So these are butane uh, chargeable and uh, pretty easy to use. So you might want to look into getting one of this. I think it cost me five bucks and I got it at, uh, let's see, it was called uh, Value. Uh, we have a local hardware store called Value. So that's where I got it for five bucks. So it's really pretty cool. So that would help heat up that button. Excuse me, I'm going to need to cough. <coughs> But, uh, anyways, then I could have used this to, to heat the button up properly because that's the key. You're going to have to have all surfaces pretty hot. Um, so I wanted to show you that tinning. Hmm, let's try something. Okay, here's a great experiment. We've got about five more minutes. These are just experiments. This is nothing, uh, you know, precast because I wanted to show you that you do fail until you do uh, succeed. Now you're probably going to giggle if you already know what these things are. And uh, <laughs> they're the underwires for a bra. <laughs> and I thought, well, gee, they're very sturdy. And maybe they would make a good uh, item to try to solder. So we're going to try this tinning process I was trying to tell you about to give this uh, an optimal shot here. <coughs> It's hard talking for an hour. Give it a try. But let's try. So don't laugh at me too much, but this just underscores how important it is to save every little bit of metal because you just never know what you can use it for. I see this as a possibility to create frames. I need to create something that has a heart, so I'm going to use this, this uh, bra underwire if it works. Uh, so this is one of my experiments that I'm giving it a shot. Uh, so you can see my failures, but uh, trust me, we do have some successes for sure. So it's just a matter of getting your mojo together and trying it. So let's try this for now. Let's just give it a try. Again, I wish I had my flux because in this situation it would probably work better. But oh well, we'll, we'll try it. Just kind of cleaning up the surfaces ever so sloppily, but try to be as precise as you can when you get down to this. Uh, let's just try it for the heck of it. So I'm just going to do something called tinning. We're just going to see if it works. So I'll put it here just to make sure I'm in your view. So you can actually pick up pieces of solder. And I'm going to go ahead and give this a second to dry because it could be some of my problem as I'm not dealing with dried surfaces. Sandy will tell you, she had some good success with practicing. When I was there showing her the, the steps, we couldn't couldn't get two pieces of metal to stick together. But we, we know why. One of the metals had a coating on it, so uh, the coating isn't going to let you uh, get to the base metal. So we'll talk about that in a second, too. You can actually file down the coating so that you can get to the base metal. <clears throat> So let's give this one a shot. So I'm just going to pull this apart for now, and I'm going to try to tin this. So tinning essentially is putting a coating of solder on here. So let me uh, let me actually secure this. I was hoping to do it that way, but I think I'll have to. There, that should do it. Let's try to get a little tin on here. And it's called tinning 
because believe it or not, solder has tin in it. So let's try heating this guy up here. So I'm just gonna hold it on there for a minute. Get the metal as hot as I can. It may not do it because this might be steel. Who knows? <laughs> this is just an experiment for me because I wanted to see if I could get it to work. And guess what? If I can't get it to work, I'll use that JB weld. That could be your stopgap um, if you, for whatever reason, can't get a specific piece of metal to solder. You can fall back on Plan B or JB and have a plan. Let's see what we got here. It looks like it's trying. Well, I don't think it's going to stick. And this was an experiment. I just wanted you to see. You just got to try. I haven't lit anything on fire, I haven't done anything, I haven't burnt myself, so that's a big deal. And you just gotta try. What I will do is create a little short video of, of a success, and I'll edit it into this so you can see that it will work. I didn't want you to see that I was failing all along, but I wanted you to see, try it. Give it an experiment. Treat it as a fun, oh, will this work, kind of thing. I think that's where some of us get a little stuck sometimes. We let our heads stop us instead of jumping right in and giving it a good old try. After all, we didn't jump in the pool and already know how to swim. We had to learn how to swim. So that same thing goes here. We gotta learn how to swim. So we gotta learn how to solder. Anyways, uh, one last quick uh, point and then we're done. You can see that I've been soldering on this, this work area. This work area actually is a leftover tile from my tile work that I did in my kitchen. I designed all my kitchen countertops and everything and I used this stuff as the uh, as the design material. I cut my own tile and everything and put it all in, in, in place. I've got diamonds all over the place. It really kind of looks pretty. And uh, diamonds are a girl's best friend, right? <laughs> so thank you very much for watching today. Make sure you use a uh, fireproof surface. I love these tiles because they do just that. There's no asbestos in them, so you're not breathing anything dangerous. When you are working on this, try not to breathe in the any kind of the little bits of uh, solder smoke that you saw. Try to, um, you know, don't work over top of your work. Work so that the smoke goes up because, as you know, heat rises. So it'll just go up. Just make sure you're not breathing it in. And if you're a little concerned, if you do have health issue that uh, you already are suffering from any kind of breathing issues, just wear a little a little safety mask. You can do that too. I can't stand them. I gotta I gotta be real. I gotta be in my work. I I, I don't like the, the masks, but yes, they are important if you if you already have lung issues. Well thank you very much for watching today. I hope this gave you some guts, some experience, a little bit of, okay, now I, I have a little more confidence. I can go ahead and do this and stay tuned. I'll get the video up for you. Thank you very much for joining in and have a creative day. For those of you who watched the hot iron soldering 101 today, I wanted to show you that, um, I did have success on both soldering options. This is the button that I wanted to put a jump ring on. Just wanted to show you that it did work. And look at this. The butterfly can fly again. She's got her wings back. Isn't that cool? Anyways, I'll add the success story and the, uh, the process that I went ahead and actually got this to work. And you'll be amazed. Thank you again for everyone who watched today. It was really a great experience for me, and I hope it was just as fun for you. Thank you very much, and watch for more.
And here's my little princess, Princess Muriel. She gets to uh, debut my bracelet creations. And she's wearing one right now. See that? Hi. Hi, Muriel. Say hello. Say hello. She's not that impressed today. I tired her out this morning, shooing her away. She wants to always be a part of whenever I'm working at the table. So, see? Say bye-bye. Say bye-bye, Muriel. <laughs>